Coming up on today's episode, movie theater versus home theater for the cinephile. Drobo FS, is this the ultimate expandable video jukebox? My bargain AV receiver pick and our HD picks from the upcoming Emmy Awards and of course the Blu-ray releases for the week of August 31st, 2010. This is HD Nation. Today's episode is brought to you by GoDaddy. Gamefly. Check out Gamefly.com slash HDNation for a free trial account. And Netflix. Go to Netflix.com slash HDNation for your free trial membership. <laughs> Welcome to HD Nation. I'm Robert Heron. And I'm Patrick Norton. HD Nation is your guide to the best in HD content and the best in home theater gear, no matter what your budget is. Blu-ray online satellite cable over the air. I'm not going to mention that other thing that somebody was tweeting me about. But if it's in HD, we like it. <laughs> the first 3D IMAX yeah. something that hey. we're not going to mention on our family friendly show came out. Family friendly show came out. Did you need uh, glasses? Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. Hey, in 3D HD TV news that might not make you yawn, Toshiba says that they'll have a glasses-free 3D TV later this year. At least that's what they told Japan's Yamiuri Shimbun newspaper. Thanks to a bizarre new technology that displays light rays. Well, displays rays of light, I should say. At different, different angles. angles. I don't get it. That's not bizarre new technology. Anyway, Toshiba okay, called I up, called it bizarre. Oh, okay. <laughs> Toshiba called up PCMag.com to comment on the story. Quote, we are developing 3D TVs without the need for glasses, but cannot comment further as we have yet to decide upon when to commercialize such a product, concrete specifications, or provide any other details. Right, so maybe they won't have three models out before the holidays, like it said in the original Japanese newspaper article. In this, other peculiar this sounds like news, digital signage. Yeah. This is not going to be for the home. Well, it'd be nice if it was Surprise for the home. me, Toshiba. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be an awfully <laughs> big surprise. Speaking of surprises, HP, yes, Hewlett Packard, as in I am the only person who's ever purchased a 3D, no, an, a, any HDTV from HP. They say they're working on a triple wide HDTV with the NBA, apparently to replicate Jack Nicholson's view from the floor at Staples Center. Aww. Even Aww. he has to turn his head, you know, back and forth to watch the game. It's <laughs> a sweet Just seats. like you'll have to do at home if you buy the HPs. I want one. Yeah. Yeah, no release date, no announced date, and no news if it's actually going to be a, like a 21 by 9 it better be. perspective. No other way. No other that reason. Would, that would be 233 by 1, so you can get your full on. There's a lot of fun uh, to be had with a display like that. Meanwhile, yes, there is. Sony and Vizio have new HD TVs hitting the street. Sony's first Bravia 3D HD TVs come in 46, 55, and 60 inch versions. The Bravia Edge LED LCD 3D HD TVs run from 3000 to 4700 bucks. Yeah, I saw these new announcements. They're yeah. all edgelet designs compared to the new, I want to say it's the ooh, HX909 that's out mm -hmm. right now. That's a direct lit model in their 3D category. I think that's their premium. I'm curious to see how good this is. I guess maybe their second or third gen of edgelet LCD TVs. I'd be curious to see how good they good look. Job. Uh, by the way, the ever affordable Vizio has new 27, 32, 42, and 47, and 55 inch XVT HD TVs. The 42, 47, and 55 inch use their full array true LED technology yeah. with smart dimming. They also pack five HDMI ports and dual band 802.11n wireless for Vizio's web apps, while the 27 and 32 inch offer edge lit. Uh, their Razer uh, HDTV technology. And the list prices on these run from, I want to say, $700 up to $2,200. Affordable. Very affordable. Good That's stuff. what Vizio does. In Twitterville, <laughs> at Joseph Wood tweets, at Patrick Norton, saw you holding the Denon AVR 591. Yes, you Been did. looking at receivers myself. Are you happy with it? Yeah, actually, very happy. Extremely happy. Yeah, we were doing a little sound test here earlier, and I got to say, uh, <laughs> It was it was nice. It was very nice. <laughs> Makes me want to put it into a dedicated room and get it final. Someday. Someday. Well, I'm working on the. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I may actually end up with a projector and an electric screen yeah, in my house, but that's, that's a conversation for another day after I finish that conversation with the missus. Anyhow, uh, the chloroform. <laughs> no, she's actually very. She's receptive to it because the screen will disappear, and then the child can't turn it on. That's a whole other conversation. Or draw on it with crayons. We were talking about the Denon, the AVR five ninety one, five discrete amps, so they do share a common power supply. And depending on which specs I'm looking at, it's either seventy five or one hundred twenty watts into six ohms. 
Uh, I'd rather have an 8 ohm number because 6 ohm versus 8 ohm, basically the 6 ohm number will look bigger. But I gotta say, even in our giant studio, there was enough power to blow my hair back, what little hair there is still on the top of my head. Four HDMI ports in, converts analog sources to HDMI, and it's HDMI 1.4, so it's 3D ready. DT has HD Master Audio, Dolby True HD, even Dolby Headphone is packed in there, and yeah, uh, FM is built in there, satellite radio ready, and iPod ready. The video processing and scaling, silicon optics, real, uh, I want to say, uh, the Rialta. Reality, Rialta, yeah. Uh, HQV and uh, Ferruja DCDI. So there's basically some very quality, high quality scaling built in there. Seriously, though, the best reason to go with this over Den and super cheap $250 entry level 5.1 amp, the AVR391, is the fact that the 591 includes the Odyssey calibration and audio setup. Excuse me, it's an acoustic correction system. Let me, let me grab is. the mic really quick. Ah, uh, acoustic correction systems. Here, hold the Using microphone. a little mic. Hey, there you go. Not so little. Yeah, you, you, you basically the, the mic comes with it, which is really nice, so you don't have to pay extra for that. Uh, Complete with tripod stand. Yeah, well, it's the full version. It's the, the multi-Q stuff that's usually found in more expensive amps. You basically set the mic in your listening position. You hit enter. Weird sounds come from each of the channels that are connected to the receiver. You move it to a second position, up to eight total. You let it do some math, and it optimizes the levels for each speaker. Does it also do, in terms of timing along with that, or just oh, the yeah. levels? Levels, the yeah. timing. Basically, calculates Odyssey's system is one of the more complex and one of the more in terms of as far as results you get for different room sizes and configurations right one of the better systems I've ever played with in terms of the result you get from it with really not a lot of effort I mean it's just yeah, a matter can, of moving the mic to a couple <laughs> different positions you know this hitting enter a few times and that's really what makes the Odyssey system kind of unique is that you use multiple positions for the mic too to help balance from more than one listening position. Say with most systems, you put it in your favorite spot, mm -hmm. and every other spot will maybe sound okay, but it's only gonna sound really good right where you, that mic was. Mm -hmm. With yours, it's like, okay, because of the different positions you put it in, the way the system works, it's able right. to give a wider field of better sound quality. It was interesting, it took like a half dB off one channel, a dB and a half off uh, one of the rear channels, like 12 dB off the subwoofer. So nice. Oh, by the way, when you're done, remember to save the calculations, or you have to do the whole configuration again. That's paired with uh, Odyssey's dynamic EQ and dynamic volume. Volume. Dynamic volume, I think, is more interesting than the two. It keeps the audio level level, so you don't get your ears blown out when the commercial comes on, or you oh. don't want to wake up the spouse when you're watching the shoot 'em ups at 4 a.m. The uh, quick select buttons on the remote controls power the AVR and the HDTV, so you can basically have a fast startup. It also packs HDMI on screen display overlay, so you don't have to like go into some weird mode to actually see what you're doing when you're so many old it. receivers do not. You got to go yeah. find the yellow cable and plug it in, or use the screen on the front, the little display Horrible. on the front. Horrible. Uh, HDMI 1.4. This implementation includes the audio return channel, which sends yeah. audio back to the receiver, and CEC, which is remote control signals over HDMI. The chances of you using either one anytime soon is slim, I would think. Uh, if you're using the internal tuner on your TV oh. to, to do over the air. Oh. Instead of having to run that, that optical cable right. out of your TV to the receiver, now you can just use that audio return channel. Clever. With a fancy new cable. Yeah, there, I mean, there's a laundry list of features yeah. if you go to the website. The, the so menus nice. haven't been too painful, but I haven't gone that deep in them yet. I know uh, our beloved Roger Chang has occasionally had frustration with Denon's uh, interface. And uh, yes, if you want 7.1, the AVR 791 adds your extra two channels and $150 to the price. I'm good with five one for now. This actually, I am, I'm really happy with this thing. Didn't Dylan, Denon just celebrate their 100th birthday? Yes. Turning 100, baby. Happy birthday, Denon. And they, were, they did it with some super high-end uh, toys. They have a webpage dedicated to those products, and I, I was just like, oh, yeah. Oh, that's their PR person of the list. Universal touch player. I don't and they have an AVR so. too. They didn't, I don't think they listed a price for it, but yeah. It's but got the new version of the Odyssey uh, right. multi EQ that supports 32 channels. So you can walk, <laughs> yeah, if you really want to do 32 measurements in your, in your listening environment. I like that thought. We measured every single thing. Fun being paid for it. I will do it. Home theater. <laughs> yeah, no, look, I paid for this out of pocket. I am super happy with it. 350 bucks. I think this is the best deal in an entry level AV Solid. receiver out there. And if you want 7.1, which this does not do, pick up another 150 bucks, go for the AVR 7.1. video switching now, too, and your component switching. Yeah. It would be nice if it had a second component channel, but yeah. actually I don't really need it because I've got four HDMI ins now. The only thing I'm using component for nowadays is my Wii. The Wii is it. It's my only component device. There's your, there's your mono mic. You should go thank one of our sponsors. I should. <laughs> hey, it's time to thank one of our sponsors. Let's talk about Gamefly. Gamefly is the largest online video game rental service and offers you a choice from over 7,000 new and classic titles across all consoles and handhelds. 
With plans starting at $15.95 a month, Gamefly members can rent one to four games at a time and keep them for as long as they like. There are no late fees, no due dates, and shipping is always free. Once you're done playing a game, send it back and Gamefly will send you the next available game on your list. If you really like the game you're playing, simply click Keep It on the Gamefly website and the game is yours at a discounted price. Gamefly will even mail you the case and manuals free of charge. HD Nation fans get a two-week free trial when they go to www.gamefly.com slash hdnation. Some restrictions apply. See the site for details. The Emmys aired last weekend, but since we shoot early, we don't actually know who won, but we do know who was nominated, and we thought it would be a great pool to draw from for this week's top five list, since we actually happen to be fans of several of the shows. So here they are, the top five Emmy nominees now available on Blu-ray. First up, The Simpsons, people. This is the longest running animated program ever, and practically the longest running not news program ever, entering its 22nd season in a few weeks. In case you've been living under a rock, the show revolves around the Simpsons family. Homer and Marge, the parents, their three kids, Lisa, Bart, and Maggie. It's won 27 Emmys throughout the years across several categories, along with others like People's Choice Awards, Writers Guild Awards, and has even spawned a movie, The Simpsons Movie, from 2007. This year, it's nominated four times, including one for Outstanding Animated Series, as well as for Outstanding Nonfiction Special for their 20th anniversary special, which was in, yes, people, 3D on ice. The first Blu-ray release came out earlier this year for their 20th anniversary, but it looks like they may be releasing more since the 13th season was just released last week. Next up, South Park. Do you want to read this one? <laughs> yes. You know you want to read this Another, one. Another, <laughs> along with The Simpsons, South Park has also made that switch to HD as well. That makes me so happy. Anyway, South Park is also the cause of much controversy, often deservedly so. I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Uh, the brainchild of Trey Parker and Matt Stone is on its 14th season on Comedy Central. Really? The show's central character. Well, yeah, 14th season, baby. I've been watching that a long time. It has been. <laughs> the show's central characters are four boys, Stan, Kyle, Cartman, and Kenny, who are either in the third or fourth grade, depending on which season you're on. The show often indirectly references current events and societal issues in such a way that you often don't realize it until the show's almost over. <laughs> South Park has been nominated for four outstanding animated series nine times, winning three of those. The 12th and 13th seasons are currently out on Blu-ray, although the 13th season was the first to be actually in broad actually broadcast in HD last year. Mm. Next in our list, True Blood, based on the Suki Stackhouse book series. This show sprung to life, so to speak, thanks to creator Alan Ball, you might know from Six Feet Under. The show takes place in Louisiana and follows Suki and her vampire boyfriend, Bill Compton. As well as vampires, the world also includes werewolves, shapeshifters, mind readers, and quite frankly, who knows what else, depending on what week it is. The show has already won two Emmys. That was last year, and is nominated for another five this year, including Outstanding Drama Series. Both completed seasons are currently available on Blu-ray, and this third season is ramping up to be completely ridiculous, over-the-top intense. And because I moved, my wife and I will have to wait until it's on Blu-ray to catch it up. So... We'll just watch season one and two over and over again. Good family time. Next up, we have Lost. The premise sounds simple enough. A plane crashes on an island, leaving dozens of passengers stranded. But it gets exponentially more complex and weird as they explore the island and we learn everyone's backstory. Hmm. The show has gained some hardcore fans. I am one of them. Uh, some of whom who grew increasingly frustrated with the show. But most of whom stuck it out until the end to see how it all wrapped up. All six seasons are available on Blu-ray, as well as the entire series in an insane box set. Lost has won 55 awards total, including Outstanding Drama Series in its very first season, which it's nominated for again this year. And finally, the best suits on television, Mad Men. This AMC show starts off in 1960, centering around an ad agency in New York City on <laughs> Madison Avenue. As the years pass, we glimpse current events happening around them, from JFK's assassination to the Cuban Missile Crisis, and we track some pretty serious societal shifts, like the of feminism and attitudes changing towards smoking. It might sound mundane, but as the characters develop and the plot lines get more and more intertwined, you start to realize why this was the first basic cable series to win the Emmy Award for Outstanding Drama Series, which it won in both 2008 and 2009, and has been nominated for again this year. The first three seasons are available on Blu-ray. Check them out today. 
And of course, we got some honorable mentions because five is never enough. Or was that six? Anyhow, these aren't actually available on Blu-ray yet, but will be soon. Roger's favorite show, Glee. The first season will be available on Blu-ray September 14th. And one of my favorite shows, The Pacific, will be available on Blu-ray November 2nd. I can't wait to relive the horror once again. I've read the book. I've seen the miniseries. I'll see the miniseries again. And once again, I will say, don't whine. You could be in the South Pacific and a member of the first Epic. Marines. Got a lot of good TV out there. I need to get caught up on Mad Men. I'm a season or two behind. <laughs> now I got some good Blu-ray goodness ahead of me. Hey, it's time for the new Blu-ray releases for the week of August 31st, 2010. First up, House MD, the complete sixth season, starring Hugh Laurie as the cranky but brilliant Dr. Gregory House. This medical drama follows House and his team of doctors as they try to diagnose and cure the most puzzling medical mysteries they come across. This Blu-ray release comes with a bunch of extras, including commentary on three different episodes, a never-before-seen short featuring Hugh Laurie following his character's emotional journey at a psychiatric hospital, which was shot apparently with no script and no plan. You'll also get a behind-the-scenes look as Hugh Laurie himself directs his first and only episode so far, and another featurette highlighting the hospital set from the two-hour premiere episode. Next up, Evil Dead. Yep, it's the film that started it all and eventually spawned the cult classic of the sequel, Army of Darkness, which is actually already out on Blu-ray. This 1981 horror fest follows five friends who travel to a remote cabin in the woods where they accidentally release some vicious demons. Full of gore as well as hilarity, this release comes with two all-new 1080p anamorphic transfers, both supervised and approved by director Sam Raimi himself, one in 185 to 1 widescreen and the other in the original director composed 133 to 1 full screen. It'll also include a brand new commentary from Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell. This release also includes a limited edition DVD with a slew of featurettes with titles like One by One We Will Take You, The Untold Saga of the Evil Dead, The Evil Dead, Treasures from the Cutting Room Floor, and the ladies of The Evil Dead meet Bruce Campbell, and much more. Also released this week, Anchorman, The Legend of Ron Burgundy, the rich mahogany edition. <laughs> oh man, this 2004 comedy was produced by Judd Apatow and directed by Adam McKay, a former SNL writer and director, as well as the director of Talladega Nights and the more recent The Other Guys. This film takes place in the 1970s and stars Will Ferrell as Ron Burgundy, a TV news anchor, and the hilarity that ensues when a new rival joins the team, played by Christina Applegate. You'll get two versions of the film with this release, the theatrical version and an unrated, uncut, and uncalled for edition, always my favorite. Extras include a making of, extended and deleted scenes, bloopers, as well as a conversation with Ron Burgundy, audition footage, rehearsal footage, table read footage, and much more, including collectible trading cards. It should be noted, however, that this is a Best Buy only release, and they have exclusivity through the end of 2010. Other releases this week include Ninth Company, Ninth Company Collector's Edition, Beatdown, Black Blood Brothers, the complete series, Harry Brown, Jane's Addiction, Live Voodoo, Marmaduke, NCIS Los Angeles, Season 1, Sons of Anarchy, Season 2, Tyler Perry's Why Did I Get Married 2, and The Vampire Diaries, the complete first season. It's time to thank one of our sponsors, Netflix. With more than 15 million members, Netflix is the world's largest subscription service, instantly streaming TV episodes and movies over the internet and sending DVDs by mail. This week, my Netflix delivery queue lists the 2004 cult zombie comedy, Shaun of the Dead. Time for some R-rated fun with brains. For $8.99 a month, Netflix members can instantly watch unlimited TV episodes and movies streaming to their TVs and computers, and can receive unlimited DVDs delivered quickly to their homes. Blu-ray plans start at just $5.99 a month. With Netflix, there are never any due dates or late fees, and shipping is free. Members can select from a growing library of titles that can be watched instantly, and a vast array of titles on DVD. Among the large and expanding number of devices streaming TV episodes and movies from Netflix are Microsoft's Xbox 360, Sony's PlayStation 3 game console, and Nintendo's Wii console. As a new member and HD Nation viewer, you can get a free trial membership. Go to www.netflix.com slash HDNation and sign up now. Be sure to use this URL so that they know we sent you. Everybody knows I'm a big fan of Drobo storage boxes. Basically, you got a bunch of slots inside the front. You drop drives in a drive drive, drive dies. You pull it out, you pop in a fresh drive. Mm -hmm. it, 
recreates your lost data. It's kind of like a RAID 5, except it's super easy to manage. And if you want to make it bigger, you yank a drive out, you put a bigger drive in, and you keep rolling through drives and making it bigger as drives get larger and less expensive. Totally. However, I thought I'd throw it against the ultimate hardware tester, Mr. Heron, for the new Drobo FS, which is essentially... Right, they had they had the Drobo, and then they had the Drobo Share. Right, a little slab you could add to the original Drobo that would add a network connection to it and some other network-centric features. The Drobo Share was not a hot performer in terms of network performance. However, the Drobo FS shocked and amazed you when you got to the network bandwidth testing, did it not? That part, too. And overall, I think the ease of use is probably the biggest item right. for a product like this. Uh, Drobo FS is $699 list price. You find it for a little bit cheaper if you shop around online. Uh, you pointed out it holds five SATA drives. That's one up from the older, smaller Drobo units that came before it. Gigabit Ethernet. It's built in. No longer do you have to add that secondary slab like before. There's your one gigabit Ethernet port right in the back. The setup was simple. You install some software that's available for Windows, uh, OS X, or Unix Linux, if you're, if you, whichever format you want to download the software for. Add the drives to the box, connect all the cables, turn on the power. My PC running the running the DroboShare software found, uh, basically it detected the product automatically right on my network and allowed me to do the basic setup right from there. It was really a couple of clicks and boom, I was done. Now with using, in this case, say four one terabyte drives, just to give you an idea what storage capacities are like, uh, loaded up with four one terabyte drives, we ended up with about 3.36 terabytes of right. formatted storage. Of that, you get about 2.67 terabytes of available storage. That's about basically 79% of your total capacity with the ability to have one drive fail at any time. Right. That's the basically the, the lost storage goes to parity data. Totally. That, again, allows you to restore lost storage. Now, one of the neat features that this product does is allow you to enable a dual disk redundancy. So you can have two drives actually fail at once. However, that knocked it down to about 1.77 terabytes. It's about 53% of the total right. available storage that was on there. But you only had four drives in there, not five drives. Totally. Yeah. You would you would not lose as much of a percentage of the drives if you had five drives installed for the for the dual drive lost feature. You're Lose, you're going to lose close to half if you're going to lose two drives at once. It's, it's you're going to lose a lot of storage that way. Right. But that's kind of nice. It's like <laughs> I, I run a I run a product from uh, Netgear called ReadyNAS NV Plus, and it has the ability to lose any one drive. But in the process of replacing that one drive, if I lose a second drive, it's all over. I've just right. lost the whole RAID array. The other nice thing about this product too is that when you pull the drives out of it, say say you want to transport it, and you just pulled all the drives out. You don't have to remember what order the drives went back in when you go to re rebuild this thing. It, it, unlike a lot of RAID devices, it, it, it really doesn't care where you put the drives in. As long as they're the original drives that were in there to begin with, mm -hmm. you're going to be good to go. Yeah, or if the box actually physically dies, you just pull the drives out of your old box and put them into the new box. Totally, but I used to have to write on each drive, oh, this is one of four, two of four, <laughs> three of four. Make sure you keep them in order, don't mix them up, blah, blah, blah. How did it do on performance? On my Gigabit Ethernet enabled network at home, uh, transferring files from this box to my PC, basically the read speed off of this, about 55 megabytes a second. Wow. Uh, really good. That's compared to about 35 megabytes a second I get with my ReadyNAS NV box, transferring similar files. In this case, I was using one large ISO file, nice. uh, multi-gigabyte ISO file. Now, uh, when writing t large files to this device, I was averaging around 16 me megabytes per second. It got a little bit slower if I threw a lot of smaller files at it, like right. uh, encoded music in particular. I was transferring that. Power consumption, awesome. Uh, under load, 45 watts. I never saw it really go above that the whole time I used it, which was, you know, uh, not much to, to worry yeah. about. If you have like a 500 watt power supply and an old PC you've converted to a to a totally. uh, Unraid or a free NAS. Yeah, ho hopefully it would ratchet lower. down and be a little more efficient, but still, 45 watts right. is about as low. I mean, it's just you, that, that's very, very good. <laughs> also, uh, if you're going to use a product like this, realize that there, it really it, it's, it behooves you to go out and buy an uninterrupted power supply with any NAS device you're using. That way, any any kind of power fluctuations, if the power mm -hmm. cuts, this thing will have a little extra protection with it. And you know, depending on where you live, it'll give you some extra, just a little bit of extra peace of mind, really. <laughs> now, uh, this also is compatible with something called Drobo App. There's a, about a, I'd say about a half a dozen or ten apps or so that incorporate different functions like a BitTorrent client, hmm. DLNA, uh, file transfer protocol, rsync, uh, remote administration. Uh, all of these can be added individually or none at all if you really don't care. And you, those basically take up a little bit of space in the drive and then act as apps you can access through. So you can basically through do your browser. BitTorrenting 
quietly in the background in your Drobo. <laughs> like, I wouldn't, I, a lot of these applications though were pretty basic. They reminded right. me of like uh, DOS transfers of old programs, really. Like, like the, the BitTorrent client is a command line prompt. So, oh, funny. if you're not comfortable, if you're only comfortable in a graphic interface, this might not be the best scenario for you in terms of using these apps. However, on the OS X side of things, Apple's Time Machine, Compatibility is built in right from the start. Nice. So if you're using an app, if, if your if your home is Apple centric, and you need that backup support, boom, it's right there. Uh, for Windows users, you can use something called Drobo Copy that's built into the software you install on the computer. It's free, but it is pretty basic. You really have to go through and and manipulate, you know, exactly what you want to say, what you don't, uh, exclusions. It's mm -hmm. all pretty manual, but it is there. It is also compatible though with a variety, a laundry list of different third-party software solutions for doing regular backups or incremental right. backups on the Windows side of things. Uh, the only downsides I really saw to the whole package were Drobo's dashboard program. When you go to use it, it, it creates multiple windows, and every time you click on a different tab or something, it always wanted to open. So at any given time, <laughs> you'd have like three different windows open, and it'd be nice if those were all just integrated together. Right. And I'd also like to see app management in terms of the Drobo apps, being able to manage that directly from the dashboard as well, mm -hmm. rather than they actually have yet another Drobo app to manage the other apps. and it, and it kind of got a little crazy there. <laughs> but the bottom line really is that everybody, every household really needs secure file backup and storage. And the Drobo FS really was painless in terms of its setup and use. And another thing, another probably relatively significant advantage you'll have over, say, uh, the typical NAS devices I've used is that you don't have to use the same size hard drives to get right. optimal performance. You can really shove any mismatch of SATA drives into this thing. They could be you know, a, a brand new two terabyte, and then you have an older one and a half terabyte, and a one terabyte, and a 500. Right. And, you the know. smallest drive is going to restrict the amount of available space you have to back stuff up, right? Um, but yeah, you can mix, mat, mix, totally. mix and match, or mismatch and mix. And they even guide you too. It's like sizes. if you're going to replace a drive, you probably you should replace the smallest one first. Right. Overall, I just have to say, rock solid, fun to use. Uh, it did get a little bit noisy in a hot room. There have been some 100 degree days lately, and uh, this thing sounded like a small wind turbine. But in a moderately temperate room, it was actually pretty quiet. And normal human temperatures. In normal human temperatures. <laughs> it, it was a pretty quiet device, but I'd still rather stick it in the closet. As you point out, that the, the 103 degrees in the East Bay, you don't have AC, though. No, no, I had a fan going, though. Yeah, yes. It was beautiful. Oh, lights up front. This has one of the brightest front panels you'll ever deal with on a, on a <laughs> consumer electronics product. You can dim it, but you can't turn it off. So I was happy to have right. the dimming, and the dimming was actually tolerable. But Yeah, basically like a bunch of green lights is all the drives are healthy. Yellow means uh, either blinking yellow, green means don't remove a drive because it's rebuilding something. Yellow is add a drive soon, and red means something died. That <laughs> is that, and along the bottom, they <laughs> have a blinking. row of 10 blue, bright blue LEDs mm -hmm. that give you an indication for how full the product is or right. how much storage is being used currently. So just by taking a quick glance at the front, you can get a pretty good idea of what's going on or if a drive's failed or if you're running out of room. Just too. don't put it right next to the HCTV if you like to watch at night in the dark room. No, <laughs> you don't want the... <laughs> so, or turn it sideways. You like it more than the ReadyNAS? Is it worth the extra cash over a ReadyNAS? I think for ease of use, definitely. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, I have to say, for, for the price point for a five-drive unit, that's, that's right in the ballpark of a right. lot of other products out there. And I'll be honest, the, I think just the setup Especially if you have OS X and you're able to use Time Machine. Mm -hmm. I think if you have a, on the Windows side, you'd have to do a little more research to find probably a backup program. Right. But man, it's, it's, it's just a simple way to just automatically put another drive letter on your computer that everyone on your local network can access for just secure, good storage. And it, it'd be really nice to have like two of these devices, <laughs> put one at your friend's house, R-sync the two together. But that's a whole nother story. So I, I, want, I want more than one now. <laughs> Let's good take stuff. a moment to thank one of our sponsors. He likes it, kids. GoDaddy.com. You're looking to drive viewers to your video content? I know I am. You should get a .tv domain name. We got one. And stand out from the crowd. I hope we do. .tv domains are perfect for podcasters, video bloggers, anybody with something to say and wants to get their video on. And of course, they're available now at GoDaddy.com. And in case you haven't seen them, check out GoDaddy's free iPhone, Android, and BlackBerry applications. They let you order right from your phone, manage your current domains, and quite a bit more. Want a discount on your GoDaddy purchases? You should use the code HDN8. You'll get 10% off any order. And if you want to, well, save a little bit more or save something a little different, find your perfect bonus. Check out revision3.com slash GoDaddy for a list of all the amazing GoDaddy deals you can find from revision3.com. Dear Patrick, Robert, and Robert. 
Okay. I think it means Roger. Cloned. I have been cloned. You've been cloned? Well, Maybe. No. Dear Patrick, Robert, and Robert, it is a well-known fact that to us movie buffs, movies on HDTVs just look weird, too smooth, etc. What I don't get, and hopefully you can elucidate, is why movies seen in digital theaters look perfectly wonderful. The projectors are obviously HDTV resolution or higher. What gives? Why can't my Bravia look so good? Thank you in advance. Jonathan in Cincinnati, Ohio. Yeah. I, I gotta say, one of the reasons is you're like 40 feet away from the screen, you're in a room full of people, you're excited about the movie, you've got that whole like, I'm in a cinema with other humans watching a, a movie, I'm getting my cinephile on, I'm getting my cinema on. Digital cinema is a beautiful thing. Yeah. It really, really is. Uh, but to compare, say, what you see in a digital theater compared mm -hmm. to what you're looking at in your Bravia television, uh, there are some distinct differences between these devices. Uh, many of the digital projectors used in theaters offer about 1080p resolution, like you mentioned, 2048 by 1080 resolution or greater. Uh, some of the new 4K projectors would be twice as many pixels. These same projectors also incorporate very high quality optics and they provide a refresh rate that is a multiple of the 24p material being presented. Just like your Bravia. Yes, <laughs> uh, hopefully. Hopefully, yeah. However, it's not quite the same looking mm -hmm. in terms of how that, like when I see an LCD screen recreate a, a say a 120 hertz in frame right. repeat mode versus say seeing it in the theater on a projector doing its refresh rate at some multiple 24p, I just think the look of film looks bad, but the theater is what you should be comparing everything else right. to. Well, it's kind of funny, right? The, here's the thing, the projector in a theater was designed to recreate the experience of light going through film, going through a particularly expensive lens as closely as possible. Totally. Which brings us to color. Arguably, the most telling difference between what you see in the theater yeah. versus what you have at home is color. And the digital cinema format and the front projectors that basically pr produce that image can produce tens of trillions of colors compared to the billion or so colors with today's TVs and front projectors. Right. And uh, not only are there more color hues and richer colors possible in the in digital cinema, but that fine stepping between individual levels that, that basically you can almost think of it as like the grayscale steps, it basically reduces banding artifacts and posterization. Uh, it makes it a non-issue. Right. So in those very fine gradients you'll see of like a sunset or sky shots, you, you should never see banding or anything like that. It's, it's like the difference between say 8-bit color versus say 12 or 14 or 16-bit color. Right. And that, that is the primary difference. It's like, not only do you have a wider palette of colors to, to choose, uh, actually the digital cinema initiative standard, right. it, it was designed so that it comes very close to what you get when you shine light through film in terms of color qualities and things that can be done. Are there that many films actually being distributed for digital cinemas in 4K? My thought was no. Could I be wrong about that? I, that's a good question. I don't know the answer to that. I, I would say probably not. I say yeah. there's probably not a lot of 4K compared to, say, 2K distribution. Right. Probably not as many movies being distributed in 4K, but 4K theaters, they're, they're definitely not the majority. 2K right. theaters are still the standard as far as, well, the majority as far as digital cinema goes. So it definitely comes back. Color is basically the richness of colors and the quality of the display. Because these all are all, these are expensive, expensive projectors we're talking about it, here. I, th I think your color and the optical quality mm -hmm. and just the, the way you can make that image on the screen, those are really the differences. It, it, it's a shame you can't drag a TV, a well-calibrated home theater TV right. into the theater and do, do that side by side because it's hard to just right. go to the theater and then go home and try to like, oh, how does this compare right. without having them right there? There's also, I, th I still think there's also a little bit of a placebo effect that you're in the theater, you're with other people, you smell popcorn, that little punk three rows ahead of you breaking up with his girlfriend on his cell phone. I, I bought a cell phone jammer. I'll, I'll let you borrow it. <laughs> That's awesome. You gotta have one. Click. <laughs> <laughs> Michael emails, hey guys, love the show, keep up the great work. Thanks, Michael. He says he just watched the show this morning and he was thinking of one other HD movie from the video game genre that we didn't mention, Dead or Alive, AKA DOA. Great Great action movie, and it does honor to the video game with the beach volleyball scene. That would be from Michael in Glasgow, Kentucky. How could we have ever missed DOA? I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, in other email, hey, we got this note that says, hey guys, I'm sure you've gotten about 100 emails about this by now, but I noticed that this week's HD Nation, the HD 30 frames per second format, had sound that was out of sync. Fairly sure this issue Fairly sure the issue was not on my side as I tried it on three different media players. Thank you, by the way. And they all showed the exact same thing. Hope you can get it fixed in future sh future shows. Signed, Justin. 
Okay. Uh, well, we are in the process of, we have re-architected and are in the process of re-engineering our you're entire... You're doing a facepalm. Yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> Is the headache that bad? The... Uh, <laughs> So it was on our end, Justin. Yeah, your 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 playback prowess is. You not might want to try you. downloading it one more time, just in case, because occasionally we've seen some very peculiar file errors related to downloads. However, in this case, we are in the process of, as I started to say before the face palm, um, we're in the process of we've kind of re-architected. Now we are in the process of rebuilding our entire post-production process, i.e., what happens once we finish editing and final cut and load it up to a server. At which point, it gets run through a whole series of servers that edit that render out the multiple formats and then send them to the content delivery network. It is currently a manual process. We're in the process of making it a fully automated process, process, this process, like process. Sounds like good growing pains. That's this, all. Yeah. And We've got it, though, right? I, are we going to fix this one? I, we are working so hard to we make this never happen We took care of the studio internet. <laughs> well, yeah, it could be worse. With Techzilla a couple weeks ago, we actually had... Um, to edit the video and found out that the project from Final Cut had died on the server, and then when we went to recreate it, it's just, it... That's a snafu. Yes, we're... <laughs> Justin, we're on it, dude, I'm so sorry. Yes. Hopefully it'll never happen again. Crawling our ways <laughs> to epic production. That's all oh, we can do. Boy. Hey guys, <laughs> we hope you did enjoy this episode of HD Nation. As always, we want to know what you think, so please send your comments, questions, or suggestions to hdnation at revision3.com. Because if you don't ask us questions and give us ideas, we'll be clueless and, and well, well, we'll just stay at home and watch movies instead of making the show. And you can always find us on YouTube, youtube.com slash techhd. That's got pretty much, well, just go there. You'll enjoy it. You can find links regarding everything we've talked about in today's show in the show notes on the show page at hdnation.tv. Whoa, plus you'll <laughs> find all of the links to subscribe to the show. So please subscribe and watch. And until next time. Thanks for watching. I'm Patrick Dorton. And I'm Robert Heron. We'll see you next week.